All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Okay, today I want to show you an, a very easy way to sort of create a whole bunch of geometry called an array and, you know, just sort of mess with it. Um, obviously, there are thousands of cubes here, actually probably about a thousand to be exact. Um, and, you know, I just have a light attached and sort of have, you know, the camera cruising kind of into the center location here. A um, couple of lights in here to sort of illuminate stuff. But anyway, this is a sort of like an abstract thing where the power of an array can really, you know, help you out in terms of creating, you know, some sort of like cool symmetrical abstract effects. Okay. So this is just something I put together. I'm not really that happy with it. Um, the light, I'll, I'll show you kind of what I did with this um, and why I'm not happy with it a little bit later on. But for right now, let's just say, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> okay. So anyway, that's that. So that's called an array. Let's find out real quick how to make one of these. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that for a second. And I'm going to show you right now I have a cube array set up right here and as you can see it's just an array of cubes um, it's a 10 by 10 um, array and if you look over here I have them all grouped together in a single group and within each group um, you know we could go and start isolating each little cube you know according to where it's at in the array because when you create an array and what we're doing here is is sort of just you know creating a stacked array there you go. You have all these, um, you know, different cubes in here, but that's really hard to keep control of. So really grouping is, is, is your friend right here when we do arrays. Okay. I'm going to show you how to make a quick array and um, kind of, you know, w what to look for as you're doing this. All right. So let's get started. I'm going to sort of just delete that. No, I tell you what. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll just go ahead and delete that. And let's come up here and just create a, a simple cube. All right, so go to your Create menu, and let's come down here, and let's do a polygon cube. And I'll just sort of just randomly place one there. And I think I might adjust this a little bit before I get started. And in the polycube history, I'll th I think I'll just do a 1, 1, and 1 right there for, you know, the height, width, depth, all that. And there it is. And I think what I might want to do too is come over here into my channel box and just put that at a zero origin point. Okay. So now the cube is right there in the middle. It's one unit high by one unit wide by one unit deep. And, and there you have it. It's a one unit kind of thing. <laughs> okay. Well, making a ray is very easy. All you have to do is select your object. Um, in this case, um, it doesn't really matter what menu set you're in right here. Just go to edit and we're going to duplicate special right here, the duplicate special command. And I'm going to go ahead and press my options. It's going to bring up a box like this and we're going to go ahead and just stay with standard defaults. Now, sometimes I, I like to hit reset settings before you do anything. Um, that way it just gives you, you know, kind of a starting point by default. And in this case, I want to duplicate this um, about nine times because I want a 10 cube array. Now, right now it's just one cube. So in order to make it 10 cubes, I'd have to do a, about nine copies or exactly nine copies to make this array. Okay. But right now we haven't defined any, any parameters about how this array should be created. So I want to look at maybe creating something along the X axis. Okay. I, I want it to go 10 units long here. So we know we have the 10 units set by the number of copies plus this one. So that's 10. And we need to know um, how to translate this for X, Y, or Z or Z. Okay. So I think what I want to do is just go, go across the X axis right here. And I want those to be about two units apart. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to two and I'm going to hit apply. And predictably, um, it goes this way. Now, if I do a command Z, I'm going to do a command Z here. Uh, we'll go down here. We'll do a command. Oop. Well, command Z, command Z. I'm going to go back to the beginning here. <laughs> 
Okay, so now it went this way. Now, if I wanted to go the other way, I might want to try something like negative 2, okay, and hit apply, and there it goes the other way, okay? So, you know, you can use negative values here. You can use positive values. It's all good, whatever you, whatever you want to do. Okay, well, I'm going to stick with the negative 2 value right there, and I'm going to go ahead and just sort of select these. I'm going to, I'll close the duplicate special options here, and I'm going to select these. And there they are, right there as a group. I've just selected them, and I think I'll go over to the general menu and just group them, okay? So that's my group one. And I, I'm going to just leave it gen generic right now. Okay, so let's select group one by choosing it over here in the outliner. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to go to Edit, Duplicate Special, and I'm going to add another array. But instead of having it go along this way, I want to take all of these objects that I just put into a group and I want to array them down this way. Okay? So in the, I, I know that that's probably going to be my Z axis because Y axis is going to go up and down. So first, I think I'll just sort of set this to, uh, you know, like negative 2. Okay? I'll set negative 2 right there and we'll go ahead and hit apply. Okay, well, look at what happened they kind of got offset. And that's because we had this translate value set to negative two as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do a command Z. I'm going to go back to where we were before. And let's take a look at what we have. There it is. And let's do this. Let's put this translate value back to zero because we really don't need, you know, another duplication along that X axis. But the Z We've got a negative two. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. Okay. So easy as that. Now we have our base level for the array. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and choose these again. I think what I'll do is close this window. I'll choose all these again. Um, let's just start from scratch and I'll group those. I'm just going to do a quick group. And now I have the whole group selected. I'm going to go back into duplicate special and I'm going to hit options and this time I want it to go straight up so I'm going to not make this a negative 2 value I'm just going to do this one at 2 okay that means positive value going up so predictably these should replicate themselves going straight up I'm gonna hit apply and there you have it okay so our array is done we should have 10 units going up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 10 across, okay? So really creating an array is as easy as that. Most of the time you're not going to be using your rotate or scale values, but just be aware of, you know, you, you have one unit that you want to set into an array. You have to remember to take into account that that's part of this number right here. So. Anyway, you get the math. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hit close. Now, um, at this point, we can look at this array and say, yeah, that's great. It's a bunch of cubes stacked up on top of each other, but how can we make that a little more interesting? Well, it's very easy. All you have to do is just sort of create an, a, a, a deformation. So I'm going to click on my deformation panel up here, and we are going to assign this a lattice okay so let's find all of our groups I mean obviously there's a lot of groups that are coming through here but before we do any kind of lattice assignment let's just look at what is sort of going on here um, all of these groups are the last ones that we created in the array okay that was the Y factor so I think what I might do is just take all of these okay in the outliner select the first command select the last and we'll go ahead and just sort of group those as well, okay? And you'll notice that there's some some groups up here that kind of got lost. Um, you know, that was basically because we started out by, you know, just sort of doing an X and a Y, or I mean an X and a Z axis grouping. So I think at this point it's okay to just get rid of these groupings like this. I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to select group 21. And I want to maybe come up and, you know, this. sometimes this is good, sometimes this is bad. I don't know what you're doing. 
but we want to delete all by type or delete by type the history on that array. Okay, so that just got rid of all that extraneous stuff in the outliner that we don't really need. Okay, so I don't know. You be the judge of what you need there. But anyway, I've just limited this down to the various groups. And, you know, within each one of these, you can start picking out your individual, you know, cubes in the array. Um, however, usually when you're using an array, you don't really need to, you're not concentrating on individuality, although you might be. So, hey, you know, I mean, it might be very a complex effect that you want to create which would sort of encompass, you know, using some expressions and some other things that are a little more, you know, high tech. But for the moment, just remember that, you know, you got a lot of cubes going on here. All right. In each group for each level. <laughs> okay. So they're all there. All right. Well, let's go and just take a look at this array for a second and think about what are the possibilities of doing something else with this. And this one's really easy. Um, in, in, in terms of an array, sometimes it's really cool to just sort of go to your deformation menu here in the tabs, uh, default, and assign it a lattice. Now, the easiest way to do that is just select everything or come over into your outliner. Uh, it's best to probably come over into your outliner and just select the entire array. And I might name that, you know, array group. I don't know, something like that, good enough for me, and minimize it. And now I know that I have the whole array group selected and that I want to um, assign a, a, a lattice to this. So I'll go ahead and click on my lattice. Uh, it might take a second or few to um, sort of let it do its thing, but once it comes up, you'll see that you get two nodes. Um, Actually, it did, yeah, it did it twice. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to do an edit. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to delete the first one. All right. And we'll just work with this lattice. Now, if you come over into your, into your, um, your attribute editor, look for the lattice shape. And you can see where it has some divisions here to start out. I, I might set mine up in this case to something like, like eight. Um, leave it at five. You can see where it set some divisions up there. And I'm going to put this one at eight as well. So I have a S divisions at eight, T divisions at five, and U divisions at eight. All right. That just sets up a lattice that kind of looks, you know, like it contains our array, which is cool. But I want to isolate this lattice for a second. So that's really cool. I'm going to go ahead and, and choose my lattice and maybe do an isolate select. So I Go ahead and click on this guy right here. That's your isolate select button. And now we can just see the lattice that's going to deform our array. And in this case, I'll just go ahead and right mouse click, go to lattice point, and that'll show you all the points on the lattice. And there they are. So if I systematically come through here and maybe just select this entire center selection with a marquee selection, and I might go ahead and scale these out just a bit. Let's say I take the top ones up here and do the same thing. There we go. And let's take the bottom ones and I'll do the same thing down there. Let's just do, let's just make those a little wider. Okay, so now we've set up the lattice with some deformation properties. If I click on this isolate select button again, now I have my array group back in there. So I can now see what that lattice is doing. And there you have it. Um, it's basically as simple as that, okay? So what you can do is if you need to send something through, say like a cheese grater or something like that, I can go ahead and choose this array group and maybe choose the, um, the move tool. And I might wanna go ahead and modify this with a center pivot mod it modification that there we go I can sort of take it from the center and move it up and down through that lattice to vary the shape of you know our geometry within that array okay so there it is very cool um, you can create a whole bunch of abstract effects and stuff um, you know the the <laughs> it's limitless okay but a lot of times you don't want to deal with this much geometry 
all at the same time. Okay, so let's go ahead and leave it like that for a moment. And maybe, you know, all I did was create some lights. So I created a light and I think I created a point light. And, you know, because the origin of this light is right here at that first cube, I might want to move this over more to the center and I might want to turn on my lights and see what that's doing um, as it goes up and down you know through that array now you know this is the the creativity part where you know you take an array and do kind of whatever you want with it um, you know here's just a light sort of moving up and down you know through that array so based on your textures and other things that are going on um, you know, you can add some interesting light effects, some interesting texturing effects, blah, blah, goes on forever. <laughs> okay. So that was sort of like my light that was on the inside. And I think I colored that one, oh, something like a, you know, like gave it some amber tones to it. So, so as you move that light up and down throughout this array, you're going to get some various effects that are kind of cool. Um, I think I also uh, created a directional light. So I think I just put a directional light down, down there. I'll go to my panels and look through selected while that directional light is chosen. And I'll come through here and I think, I think what I'll do is just, I just set mine at a corner like this. And uh, there we go. And that was pretty much it. And now I'll go back to my perspective camera and I think I'll choose this directional light and just sort of, you know, give it some scale so I can see what, what's happening with it. So it's coming through the other side. So I'll turn around to this angle. And there we go. All right. So I'll do a quick render. And remember, you know, depending on the materials that you have in your scene, when you do a render, um, you know, it could take a while. So... <laughs> just beware all right so there's a quick array that's how you do it name it do whatever you want to do with it and there you go okay so pretty basic stuff but very useful in terms of you know stacking geometry or doing something that you know it requires a whole lot of whole lot of stuff <laughs> all right hey well thanks for watching i'm glad to be back um thanks for all your positive comments and negative comments. I like negative comments, too, because it gives me a chance to respond. <laughs> okay, so, hey, uh, read a book. Uh, be a good person, you know, and carry on. All right, thanks for watching.